In this video, we'll talk about fixed axis rotation in rigid bodies using vectors. So far in Mechanics Map, we've talked about particles, where we're only concerned with location, linear velocity, and linear acceleration of the particle. Now we're going to start to talk about rigid bodies, where we're also concerned with orientation of the body, as well as angular velocity, or rate of change of orientation, and angular acceleration. In this system we see, we could consider the baseball to be a particle. We don't really need to know about its orientation, but we do want to know position, linear velocity, and so on. The bat, however, its orientation is going to matter a lot, as well as the rate of change of that orientation, or the angular velocity, as it comes to strike the ball. We're going to start talking about rigid body kinematics by talking about fixed axis rotation, where the body is rotating about one point that's fixed to the ground. So this will allow us to examine the orientation, angular velocity, and angular acceleration without worrying about translational motion right now. Some examples of real life applications of fixed axis rotation include the flywheel on this older motor where it has a physical axis right in the middle that it rotates about. A CT scanner can also be analyzed with fixed axis rotation, where there's an X-ray head that rotates rapidly around the person in the middle. In this case, it doesn't have a physical axis, but it still follows the path, a circular path, as if it did. In rotation, the three terms that we're looking at are theta, or orientation, omega, or angular velocity, and alpha, or angular acceleration. We can see that omega is the time derivative of theta, and alpha is the time derivative of omega, or the double time derivative of theta. Omega and alpha are sometimes also designated as theta dot and theta double dot. Just like with linear position velocity and acceleration, we take derivatives to move from theta to omega to alpha, and we can integrate to move from alpha to omega to theta. Because these movements are in a single direction, we can use some of the one-dimensional kinematics equations that we developed for constant angular acceleration problems. The form of these equations should look fairly familiar. In the first one, we have omega and alpha related by time and the initial angular velocity, omega naught. We can also find theta at any particular time by knowing alpha and the initial conditions, omega naught and theta naught. And we have a third equation, which doesn't have time in it, that again relates omega, theta, and alpha with the initial conditions, omega naught and theta naught. Recall how in planar motion, we were able to decompose our position, linear velocity, and angular velocity into terms in the x and y directions, or the i and j unit vector directions. In planar motion, all rotation happens within the plane, and these values of theta, omega, and alpha are defined with respect to the axis they rotate about. And so you'll see we've added a k-hat vector because they rotate about the z-axis. Similar to the way moments work, the axis of rotation and the right-hand rule together help you find the direction of the rotation. If we look at a physical object that's rotating about a fixed axis, like the record we can see here, the material at the center is not moving. But at every other point on the object, that point will have a velocity and acceleration we're going to be able to figure out what those are, and we're going to do that using vectors in rectangular coordinates. So here we have a record that's rotating about a fixed point O. We're going to be looking at the velocity of point P. Now the distance between P and O doesn't change on a rigid body. It's not expanding or contracting. We can decompose our vector rp, or the position vector of p with respect to o, into i and j components. Then we can take the derivative with respect to time 
of that position vector in order to determine the velocity. Recall that I said that the points P and O don't move towards each other or away from each other. And so the magnitude or the length of our P doesn't change. So when we do our derivative using the product rule, the terms with a time derivative for the length of our P go to zero. After rearranging our equation a bit, we can describe the velocity of point P by a cross product between the angular velocity and the position vector that describes the position of point P with respect to the fixed axis. If we differentiate again and use the same strategies, we can find an expression for the acceleration of point P as well. The acceleration of point P in fixed axis rotation has two terms. One is alpha cross RP, and the other is omega cross omega cross RP. In planar motion, because omega and RP will always be perpendicular to each other, we can actually simplify that second term to the scalar omega squared times the vector RP. These two terms of the acceleration of point P will actually be orthogonal to each other. And we can define them as the normal acceleration and the tangential acceleration with the expression shown here. If we look back at our particle expressions for position, velocity, and acceleration, we're going to see some fairly similar or analogous equations. So remember that the distance between P and O are not changing, and so those terms have been set to zero. If we look at acceleration, for example, we see theta dot squared times R. Here we see omega squared times R. We see R times theta double dot, and here we see alpha or theta double dot crossed with R. We can extrapolate our fixed axis rotation a little bit to talk about rolling without slipping. So imagine we have this car tire and the car is spinning its wheels. It's been lifted up off the ground. C is acting like a fixed axis. It's attached to the car, which is being held still. We can find that R of P with respect to C crossed with omega gives us a velocity of P in the positive I hat direction. Additionally, we can find the acceleration of point P and it's going to have two components in the positive I hat and the positive J hat. If we now set the car down on the ground and there's no slipping between the wheel and the ground, point P has to have the same velocity as the ground. Since the ground's not moving, we can find that the velocity of P equals zero in this case. However, the velocity of C is not going to be zero. The car's going to move forward. We can find it by taking omega cross the vector R of C with respect to P. And that's going to give us a velocity of C in the negative i hat direction, the opposite direction to the velocity of p when we were holding the car up. We'll also find that p does have an acceleration, but it's only in the normal direction. It has no acceleration in the tangential direction because there's no slipping of point p in that direction along the ground. Point c also has an acceleration, but it'll only be in the tangential direction. We'll find out how to calculate that acceleration when we talk about relative motion. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.
Now consider that we've placed the car back on the ground. Because it's rolling without slipping, now imagine we've placed the car back on the ground. Because the wheel is in contact with the ground and there's no slipping, the point on the wheel and the point on the ground have to have the same velocity. Because the ground isn't moving, then the velocity of point P has to be equal to zero. The velocity of point C, however, we can, we can calculate using our equation where this is RC with respect to P. So our equation is omega cross RC with respect to P. And we find the velocity of the C is in this direction, in the negative i hat direction, which is opposite to the velocity of P when the car was lifted. For acceleration, point P is accelerating in the j hat direction. This is because at the next instant, that point is going to lift off the ground as the car rolls forward. But it isn't accelerating in the i hat direction because it's in contact with the ground and not slipping, and the ground isn't accelerating. On the other hand, point C is accelerating only in the i hat direction. And we'll be able to calculate where we got this acceleration from for point C when we get to relative motion. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and other material at Mechanics Map.